Hello, fellow Fulbrighter. My name is John Bader. I'm the executive director of your Fulbright Association, and I'm so glad to be chatting with you today with thanks for your willingness to participate in advocacy this year. It's so important that Fulbrighters stand together, united for the Fulbright program, and raise awareness among members of Congress as to the importance and impact of the Fulbright program now and in the future. So let's dive right into this. I'm going to give you a brief workshop on how to do this advocacy in a way that you'll find is very easy, fun, and interesting. So let's go right now to that. First, let's talk about our purpose. Our job in meeting with Congress is to raise awareness of the Fulbright program. As time goes on, more and more members of Congress do not understand this particular program, its importance, its impact, how it works. So our job is to educate them. We want to specifically offer them how it works, which is an exchange program as well as co-funded by many countries around the world. We'll get into those particulars in a minute. Number three, we want to ask for an increase in funding from the current level of $287 million to $317 million, or an increase of $30 million. That's a generous investment, but an important one and an efficient use of taxpayer dollars. Number four, we want to tell stories about local and global impact to show that this program has a wonderful, sustaining, and powerful effect here and abroad. And number five, we want to complement the advocacy efforts being done right now by chapters across America who are meeting with House district members. So this year, chapters will be meeting with House members and our national advocacy efforts will be meeting with Senate offices. We'll also be complementing the work of the Fulbright Prize event on Thursday, May 16th. That's where we'll be bringing in members of Congress, and they'll get a sustained evening-long look at the Fulbright community, and we're excited about that. Our plan. First is that we've already reached out to all 100 U.S. Senate offices, asking them for Zoom appointments in late April or early May. Uh, brief appointments, 20 to 30 minutes at the most. Second, we're recruiting right now volunteers like you from every state and identifying team leaders to be in charge of each of those groups. Obviously, we would like to have constituents from every state, so it's so important that you're willing to do this uh, wherever you are. Number three, we will construct these teams, letting you know the composition of your team members and the timing of the Zoom meeting with a link Number four, we will send the staffer the message and ask so that they will see this document in advance. I'll go over that in just a minute. Number five, team leaders will contact you in advance of that Senate meeting by either email or setting up a Zoom so that the group of you can get to know each other and know what you'll be doing and in what order, just to be comfortable and familiar and ready to go. Number six, you will attend the scheduled Senate meeting and tell your story. It's as simple as that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here's what you'll do at the meeting itself. The team leader will thank the staff member for meeting with you and explain that you are all members of the Fulbright Association here to help understand uh, the Fulbright program and ask for their support. It's very important that this become an educational moment for that staff member, and so you're there to help them better understand the program. Then everybody introduces themselves. You'll go around on this Zoom call. Uh, where do you now live? What do you do? What did you do on your Fulbright, and where did you do that? Keep that uh, succinct, because you'll be telling more stories in just a few more minutes. All right, then the... Th leader will walk through the message and ask, which I will get through in just a minute. That ask is for that $30 million increase. 
After they've walked through that, then you'll tell your stories of local and global impact. Then ask if they have questions, thank them, and that's the end of the meeting. So here is our message about Fulbright. This is the, the awareness and the understanding that these meetings should accomplish. There are six of them. First, we want them to understand that half of all grantees are Americans sent overseas to teach and do research and build relationships. That is typically what they will understand, that the Fulbright is an outbound program. But number two is the second piece of this. Half of grantees are inbound. These are international students and scholars who have come from 162 countries to the United States. They come to campuses across America benefiting higher ed and spending their grants here in America in communities everywhere. Number three, in 49 countries where 80% of grantees uh, come from and go, the Fulbright is a partnership with key allies like Germany and Mexico and many others. Number four is related to that. Nearly $100 million extra comes from these 49 countries. So that makes Fulbright a rare program that leverages U.S. taxpayer dollars uh, with, uh, with contributions from other countries. Number five. Uh, for a one-time investment, that is for the grant itself, the benefits to both the grantee and to the United States are a lifetime of contribution and leadership. There are so many people who have gone on to successful careers uh, in and out of government, uh, in all kinds of sectors, and done amazing work across the planet, all for a one-time grant. And number six, Fulbrighters live in every state and every district, and they serve their communities there, and they do it well. So that's another example of that continuing benefit for the program after a one-time grant. Here are a few success tips. First, be familiar with our message and ask. Uh, I've gone through that just a minute ago, but it's online at our advocacy toolkit, fulbright.org slash advocacy. For this Zoom meeting, you want to be sure you're going to attend and that you're there in advance, five or six minutes, just to be sure your mic is working, everything's set up well, and that you've connected to your team. Remember that what they're going to remember are the stories you tell. Of course, it's important to give some budgetary background. That's fine. But really what's memorable is the stories you will tell about the experience that you had overseas and what's going on here in the United States. To do that, I suggest that you choose just one moment or an example of a positive mo uh, experience that you had on your Fulbright. An impression you made, a friendship you built, anything. It can be very small, but small and personal can be more memorable. Explain how your uh, Fulbright has helped your career and affected your community here in the United States. That's the long-term payoff. How did it change the way you saw the world? How did it affect your career? In what ways have uh, your fellow Americans benefited from your return? Always be succinct. These meetings are very brief. They're taking notes, but they have very limited time, so you want to keep your storytelling and whatever points you're making, crisp and to the point. Finally, when the uh, meeting is over, the leaders of, of these teams should follow up with the staff member, give them a thank you note uh, by email, and then submit a summary of the meeting to Samantha at Fulbright.org. And that's it. I'm so grateful for your time today, for your commitment to the Fulbright program, your interest in advocacy, and all the work you'll do in the coming weeks. Keep in mind that we're only asking for about an hour of your time in preparation and then in the execution of the meeting. Enjoy, good luck, and thank you for standing for Fulbright.